Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Demystifying the Gyrator Capacitor Magnetic Circuit Model. There are two references to this presentation. One is a video which is actually describing the reluctance type model, magnetic model. And then there is a reference to the original paper by David Kamil, who was first to come up with this idea of this gyrator capacitor model. I highly recommend to read it. It's a very interesting paper. So let me say a few words about the background. The reluctance model is being used widely to describe magnetic circuits like transformer, gapped core inductors, and integrated magnetics. Now the advantage of the reluctance model is that it is intuitive since the equivalent voltage, current, and resistance clearly associated with the magnetic parameters. However, this approach has some disadvantage. The Gyrator capacitor model is much less intuitive, but it solves some of the reluctance model problems. In this presentation, I am explaining the theory behind the gyrator capacitor model and demonstrate its use. I hope that this presentation will sort of unveil some of the mystery around this uh, gyrator capacitor model. Now we are using equivalent circuit models to represent physical domains like mechanical or thermal, in which we are translating the equations of the physical domain into an electrical equivalent such that the voltage, impedance, and current are actually representing the original parameters of the physical system. In this case, we are talking about a magnetic system with magnetic parameters that we are going to represent by electrical parameters. Let me start off with the reluctance model, which is very well known and it's used quite a bit. And here I'm showing a inductor built around a ferrite core with a gap. Here are the windings. This is the gap. This is the magnetic path length. And this is the length of the gap. And this uh, ferrite core has some cross-section area, A sub E. Now, starting with Ampere law, we know that the MMF n times I is equal to the circular integral of the magnetic field times dF. This is the length. This is the whole circle. And in this particular case, we have two sections to this circle. One is the ferrite and one is the gap. And so we have a magnetic field within the ferrite, magnetic field without the gap. And these are the magnetic path length of these two. Now, since the magnetic field is equal to the flux divided by mu sub zero, which is the vacuum or air, and then the relative permeability times the cross-section area, we can describe this relationship by this equation. And then we call one over this term reluctant. This is the reluctance, this is the definition of the reluctance. So we find that the MMF is equal to the flux times the reluctance of the ferrite and the flux times the reluctance of the gap. Uh, the flux is the same because the flux is sort of circling around uh, for both the gap and the ferrite. I'm uh, neglecting fringing effect and some other second order effect. So now that we have this uh, representation, we can describe it by a electrical network in which we have a voltage source. Now this will be a voltage source. The flux will be the current and the reluctance will be the resistance. So this actually, this network represents this equation. And in this case, of course, we have the MMF is emulated by the voltage, flux by current, and the reluctance by the resistor, okay? So this will read the equivalent circuit. Now we do need some electrical interface. I'm just showing the MMF. Now here there is a, of course, the electrical part, the voltage and the current, which I'm not showing here in this presentation. But we need, of course, interface, and this is what we are going to see in the next model that I will be discussing. Now the reluctance is defined as one over this term. Now notice that uh, sort of missing here is n square. With n square, this will be the equation for an inductor. The mu, the permeability time area divided by magnetic path length. So without the n here, this will be like the inductance of one term. 
So this is what we define as A sub L, the inductance per one term. And of course, the inductance of the whole thing will be N squared times this term. So let's move now to this gyrator capacitor model. And the first thing to discuss is the gyrator. What is a gyrator? Now, the idea of the gyrator was first presented by Telegram uh, as a fifth element, so to speak. We have the resistor, inductor, capacitor, and this is the transformer. And he suggested another element, gyrator. And in fact, he also suggested the symbol. And what it is, is some imaginary. It's not a real device. There's no device like resistor that we have. It's just a concept, you might say. It's a two-port network with some unique characteristic in that there is a cross connection between voltage on one side and current on the other side. So that the voltage said V2 is defined as a constant times the current at I1. Same thing goes for V1. And same thing goes for say, the current. So the current I2 is related to the voltage at the input. So it's a cross coupling between voltage and current. So this is the generator, and we can represent it by an electrical circuit. Actually, we can build one if we want, but as, again, it's not a device. It just will be a, a circuit that will emulate it. And we can represent it, say, for simulation as two current sources, dependent current source. On the left, we have a current source, which is a function of the voltage on the right times the constant, one of the constant. This is the gain, so to speak, of this gyrator. And then we have the other current dependent sort on the right side, K here. And if we call this side like the input and this the output, then we'd like to have the output coming out, the output current coming out to preserve the power. So because this device is passive, does not generate or consume any power. So this representation will then require that the minus will be here. So this is just an equivalent circuit that describes this gyrator with these relationships. So now comes the idea of Hamel. In that he starts with the Faraday's law, saying that the voltage is N dt, and therefore you can say that the dt is the voltage over the number of turns. And this actually fits now concept of this gyrator in that if this would be the voltage, here we have a current which is a function of this voltage, and if we'll say that this current represents the dt, then this actually represents this relationship. So the dt is this voltage and with a constant divided by n, so this will be a current which actually stands for the flux derivative, while the voltage here is n times i, because the voltage is a function of the input current times the constant, so the voltage here is n times i. So the gyrator is used to translate a voltage to the dv dt, to the derivative of the flux, and also it sort of represents the MMF is a voltage drop. Okay, so the voltage drop here is the actually the MMF of the system. Now we can of course describe this very easily in any circuit simulator, and here I'm showing LT5. There are two dependent current sources. The voltages of each one is crossed and is the input to the other one with a constant. So this these are the coefficient of the gyrator. So this would be an empty spice representation of the concept of the gyrator with n, 1 over n, as the gain. So let me just recap what we've been doing. Originally, we have the electrical domain. This is voltage and current. We have the magnetic domain. This is the ferrite, the gap, fluxes, etc. And in the model that we are talking about, we have the gyrator, which is connecting the electrical part current and voltage in the real world, the physical world, to an equivalent circuit. 
in which a current represents the derivative of the flux and a voltage or voltage drop represents the MMF or n times i. So this is the concept of the gyrator capacitor. And now we have to get to the capacitor. So here is some mystery that I guess uh, many have been wrestling with. And this is the following. We know that the MMF is equal to the flux times the relax. This I've shown here, okay? So if I'm talking about one section, then the MMF is equal to flux times the relax. And then there could be some more element to this array. So we know that the MMF is equal to the flux times the relax. Now, if you are going to represent the magnetic circuit by an equivalent electrical circuit, and we already know that the current is the VDT, so we have a current here, and then it will be passing through some element, so the voltage on it should be the MMF. So now we have the derivative of the flux times something, which we at this point don't know what it is, equal to the flux times the reluctance. Okay, so here is the question. What is this element that when you multiply the derivative of the flux will give you the flux times the reluctance. To resolve it, I'm proposing here a simple way to do it, an intuitive way. Maybe it's not a very rigorous mathematical explanation or proof, but I think it sort of serves the point. And I'm showing this riddle, you might say, in the Laplace form. We're saying that the derivative of the flux, the Laplace operator, times the flux, which is the derivative, times x, should be equal to the flux times the reluctance. So this unknown should be the reluctance over s, because then when you multiply these, you'll get the flux times the reluctance. Now, what is the reluctance over s? It is an integral. So basically what we are saying is that if you take the derivative of the flux and then take the integral of it by multiplying it with 1 over s, then you'll get back the reluctance times the flux. Now, I can write this reluctance over s as 1 over s, 1 over the reluctance. Now, this now is surely a capacitor. So the capacitance of this capacitor is 1 over reluctance, which is this term, as we've seen, it is a sub L, the inductance per term. So we understand now that the gyrator capacitor model indeed has a capacitor, which is the element that you have to put in in order to generate the MMF. So here it is. We have the two gyrators. This is for a transformer. We have a core. We have two windings. I'm assuming 100 turns per winding. And uh, I'm assuming that the value of the AL is 0.5 microhenry per turn. And therefore, for a winding of 100 turn, uh, the inductance is 40 millihenry. So we have here the reluctance and then one over the reluctance for the capacitance. We have the gyrator here in the input fed by the source, in this case, a sinusoidal source 10 volt peak 100 kilohertz and then we have the load so there's another interface to the electrical part and the load here is one ohm so this is a direct implementation of this concept and this x here is a capacitor and the value of this capacitor is again one over the relax and what we see here is the input voltage and input current and since it is a resistive load, then of course we have a resistive behavior at the input. The current and voltage are in phase. We see the input current and the output current are also the same because it's a one-to-one -one transformer. And what we see here is there is a slight difference between the input and the output current. And this difference is the magnetization current. So Aside from being a transformer, of course, there is a magnetization inductance at the input or output, depending on where you look at. And this magnetization inductance requires some current, depending on the voltage. And this is what we see here. If I'm removing the load, so the output is open circuit, 
then what we see here is that at the input we see an inductive nature the current is lagging after the voltage because we see an inductor now and again we see the input and output current the output is zero the input is the magnetization current and this is the difference between the two so let's move now to the power inductor and modeling the power inductor here we have a ferrite with a gap as we've seen before i've put some numbers for the magnetic path length within the ferrite it's a 10 centimeter and the gap length is one millimeter and the cross-section area is 25 millimeter square so we find that one of the reluctance comes to be 1.5 this is for the ferrite and for the gap is 31 nanohenry this is 1.5 microhenry okay so these are the value of the capacitances that we have to put in the circuit so here it is we have this represent the ferrite this represent the gap and again we have here the gyrator in this case we have because we have just one winding of course and here i'm feeding it with a current source 100 milliamp 100 kilohertz frequency so we understand that in this equivalent circuit voltage is mmf so we have the mmf of the ferrite part and then the mmf of the gap part notice that the capacitance of the gap is much smaller meaning that the impedance is much much larger and this of course would imply that the major part of the mmf will be on the gap as of course we know so here are the result of the simulation here we see of course the inductive behavior the current is lagging we see the mmf coming in this is here c2 and then we see the mmf of the ferrite again it's a small part of the total mmf and most of it is of course on the gap because the magnetic field of the system is in fact in the gap here is the total mmf represented by 10 volt most of it is on the gap and only a small part of it is on the ferrite now from the voltage and current we find that the impedance of the inductor is 200 ohm at 100 kilohertz so this is what we simulated and this should be equal to 2 pi f L, the inductance and with the numbers I have given earlier we find that the calculated impedance should be 200 ohm so it's a very good uh, match between these two and this is how the inductance is calculated this brings me to the end of this presentation I thank you very much for your attention I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future thank you very much